Hello everyone, welcome to WX Capital. My name is Michael. Today, we're gonna to be talking to you about the COVID vaccine race. As everyone knows, there's a lot of activity going on right now as many different companies across the world are seeking to solve the COVID issue. And of course, that issue won't be truly solved until we get a vaccine. So today we'd like to talk to you about the top five companies and make our prediction about which one we think is in the lead right now and will ultimately deliver that much desired COVID vaccine. So to start things off, we wanna uh, give an honorable mention and that is to the GSK Sanofi collaboration. So anyone that pays attention to the farm industry knows that GSK and Sanofi are both big hitters within this space and they teamed up together to develop a vaccine. Now, they're an honorable mention because they got started a little bit later than the rest. They're still working through their phase one, two trials, but the US government just announced a $2 billion funding campaign as part of Operation Warp Speed for GSK and Sanofi to ramp up their vaccine development. All right, so coming in at number five is CanSino. Now I know most of you are probably saying, what is CanSino? And it's totally understandable that you would not have heard of this company. That's because it's entirely based in China. But as we've seen, China has a long history of battling this deadly disease. They were the first to encounter it. They were the first to have to develop different uh, measures in order to address this ongoing problem. CanSino really represents the greatest hope in China of developing a vaccine. It's currently in phase three trials and it's using a innovative adenovirus associated vector that delivers pieces of the COVID virus two cells and triggers an immune reaction. So as mentioned, they're about to start phase three, but they have the unique designation of being the only vaccine in the world that is currently approved for human use. Now there's a caveat there. It's not for everyone. This vaccine has been developed uh, collaboratively with the Chinese government and with the Chinese military. So the Chinese government has given the green light for this vaccine to be ramped up for use in the Chinese military. This is going to allow the Chinese army and Navy to have protection against the virus, even as it continues to grow across the world and thereby potentially gives China a strategic advantage over competitors. There are a couple of issues though that we should discuss with this vaccine and whether it's going to be widely used throughout the world. Two major issues. The first one is that this uses the adenovirus associated vector. And this is something that many people have been exposed to uh, throughout their lifetime. So this is a, a common virus that, that may spread throughout the population, cause mild uh, symptoms. And there's a chance that not everyone who receives this vaccine is going to be protected due to their prior exposure to the adenovirus. Another issue is that CanSino has found it really difficult to find other countries to collaborate with. So considering the current political situation, companies in China have found it challenging to recruit patients from outside of China. And so whether the results of the vaccine on a China only population are going to be widely applicable remains to be seen. And that keeps this in the number five position. All right, so number four, we've got Johnson & Johnson. Obviously, they are a major player in the pharma space, uh, largest pharma company by market cap. They've got, they've all, they're also using a adenovirus associated vector that is going to deliver pieces of the coronavirus to cells and trigger an immune system. Now, they're a little bit behind other competitors. So they are just wrapping up their phase one trials right now in both Belgium and the US. But Johnson & Johnson has one huge advantage. In a scientific article recently published in Nature in which Johnson & Johnson administered their virus vaccine to monkeys, they showed that it only required one dose to provide lasting immunity. This is a huge advantage over other competitors because as we'll see, manufacturing and the ability to ramp up dosing is a huge challenge within the vaccine space. And so only needing one dose rather than two or three, of course, cuts that manufacturing burden 
in half. So even though Johnson & Johnson got a late start, they are blazing through their clinical trials right now and are on pace to start a phase three trial in September. This has been rewarded by the US government who has already entered into a contract with this company to provide 100 million doses for $1 billion. All right, coming in at number three, and this might be a surprise for a lot of people, that is Moderna. Moderna was a company that got a lot of hype in the beginning. So they are an mRNA based company. This allowed them to translate their research into early stage vaccine very early on in this process. So back in March, they started on clinical trials, uh, one of the first companies to actually get into this space. And that really boosted enthusiasm for this company. So they started out with a stock price of around $19. They're up to $74 primarily based on the excitement and enthusiasm around their vaccine development. They kept that innovative speed up. So it wasn't just in phase one trials, they also got into phase two trials early, starting in mid-May, and have now already planned a large scale phase three trial that is beginning this month in 30,000 people. As, a, as an example of the excitement around Moderna, it actually got a specific call out from Vice President Mike Pence when they made their announcement about the phase three trials. However, there are a couple of drawbacks that prevent us from giving Moderna that number one spot. The first is that strangely, Moderna executives and other people within the company have seemed to have been selling off their shares at an alarming rate, which is, the opposite of what one would expect if they had full confidence in this vaccine. And it's also drawn skepticism from other investors. The second point is that Moderna is a relatively small company, especially when compared to major corporations like Johnson & Johnson. As such, they may lack the manufacturing capabilities to quickly ramp up on viral vector dosing versus other companies in this space. And therefore that may prevent them from becoming the number one vaccine of choice. All right, so coming in at number two, we've got Pfizer. Now, I'm sure everyone knows who Pfizer is. Huge company. Uh, they're working with a smaller German company called BioNTech that is a specialist at developing mRNA-based vaccines. Pfizer has just announced their phase three trial that consists of 30,000 patients and 120 sites globally. One interesting aspect of Pfizer is that they took multiple candidates into phase one, two. So they didn't just start out with one shot on goal. They took a couple of different shots. And based on those phase one, two results, have selected the vaccine that provides the greatest benefit. Pfizer has some really ambitious goals of when they can start vaccine production. They're aiming for regulatory approval in October of this year. Pfizer has already signed a deal with the US government to provide 50 million doses for $2 billion. They've also signed contracts with Japan and certain members of the European Union to provide those doses when the vaccine is ready. We expect that based on Pfizer's capabilities, their experience within this space, and their ma manufacturing potential, that they could be a key leader for vaccine production, not just within the US, but globally. All right, and our long awaited number one company in the COVID vaccine race, that is AstraZeneca. AstraZeneca is collaborating with Oxford to develop a innovative vaccine technology called CHAD OX1. This technology uses an adenovirus based vector similar to what we've discussed with Johnson & Johnson and CanSino, but this is taken from chimpanzees. Therefore, functionally no humans have actually been exposed to this virus before, which should make it easier for AstraZeneca to deliver these vaccines and produce efficacy in nearly everyone that receives it. AstraZeneca was the first company to announce a phase three trial starting back in late June, where they dosed 5,000 patients in Brazil. Based on this extremely rapid development timeline, 
it's expected that AstraZeneca may have approval for this sometime in later this month or in September. Now, that sounds really ambitious to us. We're gonna wait and see, but even the fact that there is that potential really is a sign of how quickly AstraZeneca is moving along with their vaccine development. So not only has AstraZeneca set a blazing pace for vaccine development, but they've also already started lining up the sort of manufacturing capabilities that are essential for distributing a vaccine to the entire world population. AstraZeneca has already collaborated with over 20 different manufacturing companies in order to ramp up dosage production to over 1 billion doses by the end of 2021. Additionally, another huge advantage is that AstraZeneca has been able to store their vaccines at two to eight degrees Celsius, which means that this is normal cold chain storage and makes the distribution process that much easier. Therefore, as things currently stand, we're predicting that AstraZeneca is going to take first place in the vaccine race. However, we should note that it's not a winner take all scenario. Considering how many different people need this vaccine, basically the entire world, that this may require a multi-company collaborative effort that spans the globe in order to distribute these vaccines to all of those people in need. All right, so that's it for our thoughts on the COVID vaccine race, but we'd love to hear from you guys. What are your thoughts on the race? Who do you think is going to win? What other elements of vaccine development should we keep in mind? Please leave us a comment with your thoughts as well as give us a like and subscribe if you enjoyed this material. Thanks everyone again for joining us and we're really looking forward to the next time here at WX Capital. If you guys liked our video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Also check out our website at www.wx.capital. We have a great subscription service that allows you to get real-time trades as well as market commentary so you know exactly what's going on with stocks and you know exactly what we're trading and what the next hot stock pick is. See you guys around.